Hafidei Toruhamzu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice being sent out on Thursday, October 1st, 2020, and the second notice sent out on Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. The virtual public hearing notice is also posted at the Guam Legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. Today is Friday, October 9th, 2020, and the time is 534. This virtual confirmation hearing is now called to order. Sizuis Maasi, everyone, for your virtual attendance at this evening's hearing. On the agenda for this virtual public hearing is the appointment of Roki A. Alcantara to serve as the director, Department of Parks and Recreation. And the impaneled DPR commission has approved Mr. Alcantara to serve as the DPR director. And E. Magahaga has approved the commission's selection. The committee is now able to move forward with the confirmation of Mr. Roki Alcantara. We will receive oral testimony at this confirmation hearing. For the viewing public's benefit, the committee will continue to accept written testimony after this hearing, which will be made part of today's public hearing record. So we are uh, very fortunate today to have two senators with us, and I thank them very much for making time in their schedule. We have, oh, we have three, so very good. We have um, Legislative Secretary uh, Amanda Shelton. We have uh, Senator uh, Joe San Augustine, and we have Minority Leader uh, Tello Taidegui. Thank you three for your attendance tonight. And, in addition to that, uh, we have, of course, joining us Mr. Roki A. Alcantara. It wouldn't be quite a confirmation hearing if he wasn't here. <laughs> the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission selection, supported by E. Magahaga to serve as the DPR director, the committee's finding at this confirmation hearing will be presented to the legislative body for concurrence. So, um, we do have a DPR commission board being fully impaneled and we did invite them uh, and we hope that maybe they will show up uh, later on tonight. So again, thank you all for joining me at this confirmation hearing. Before we receive and hear oral testimony from Mr. Alcantara and those participating at this virtual confirmation hearing, I'd first like to set some general rules of conduct for those who are virtually participating in today's hearing. The conduct of this hearing shall be as follows. The conduct of the virtual public hearing is that all public, excuse me, all participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. All participants must broadcast from a room with adequate lighting, specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. When speaking, please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone. I will moderate this hearing by recognizing each participant before presenting their oral testimony before speaking, please clearly state your name and your title for record keeping purposes. The order of questioning will begin with the panel of senators who are present. The panel member will be allowed to pose one question and then be allowed to pose uh, further questions if we have subsequent rounds. Oral testimony received shall be kept to the substance on the issues on the agenda. And the personal inference as to the character of a nominee, senator, or any individual testifying is not permitted. 
any violation of this general rule of conduct will remove that person from this virtual public hearing by the host. I ask that all participants, well, we have uh, one testifying, um, and I'm going to say you don't have to keep it within five minutes, actually. So let's go ahead and move forward. Hafidei, the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation position involves much commitment and time providing an essential link between DPR employees, its management, its commission, the legislature, the governor, but most importantly, the public that DPR serves. The director must understand the purpose, mission, and role of the department. The director must be familiar with the governing statutes or other authorizing directives to understand the framework within which the de department must operate, such as overseeing the budget and the operations of DPR. So there is a lot of oversight. I've mentioned before that it's a very large mandate and um, I'm pleased to have heard in other hearings that uh, there is some middle management being built up because there is a lot to manage. There is the territorial seashore park in the south. We have conservation park preserves, the territorial seashore reserve, uh, the Guam territorial park system, including park vendors and adopt a park agreements. There are recreational facilities under the parks, the Dedido Recreation Center. There are two pools, well, one pool and one on the way, tennis courts and the like, and the public cemetery, in addition to the budget and the parks fund. So quite a lot to oversee and um, we will have a chance to be able to ask about some of this. The director must often interact with other agencies heads, especially when coordinating its operations and resources. The director must also make regular presentations to the legislature, its commission and the public. With all of that, I want to call upon Mr. Roki uh, A. Alcantara to provide his testimony to serve as the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. And then um, if there is no other testimony, I will open it up to a round of questions from the attending senators. So Mr. Alcantara, if you could begin with your name and your position just for the record keeping purposes and then go ahead with your testimony. Good evening, senators. Um, my name is Roki Anderson Alcantara. Uh, I live in Manila. My extensive background and expertise in every level of the labor industry, from the military as a Chief Master Sergeant E-9, U.S. Air Force, retired after 27 years, uh, responsible for overall of, uh, management of 200 personnel, uh, the federal government as a civil service for the office in charge of construction, uh, U.S. Public Works Center, Guam, involved in construction inspection, compliance and surveillance, safety and contract management, reaching the level of GS-12. Uh, uh, I was employed by uh, DGSP uh, as a Jones supervisor for Naval Hospital facilities in contracting uh, for federal buildings. Also, uh, I worked and retired from the Department of Education as a procurement officer uh, also handling all uh, the procurement and federal grant, and also I'm a federal grant writer and contract administrator. As far as my education, uh, I have a bachelor's in science, uh, bachelor of science in business management, associate degree in business management and, ma uh, and administration, associate degree in construction management and engineering, US Naval Apprentice graduate, and a master's of science in business operations and technology management. I served in the military. I was a U in the US Army as a, in Vietnam. I'm a Vietnam veteran, as an E5, and then I uh, served in the US Air Force for 27 years and retired as a Chief Master Sergeant E9. The special skills that I have is, uh, like I said, I was a procurement officer and supply administrator at DOE. Uh, I did facilities and maintenance support uh, as a manager, construction 
compliance director, construction contract manager, contracts quality control manager, capital improvement project administrator, construction management engineer, federal contract specification writer, federal grant writer, safety administrator inspect inspector, certified OSHA uh, instructor for injuries and prevention, supervisory civil engineering technician, air transportation manager in the Air Force, construction inspector, construction maintenance estimator, scheduler planner for, foreman, and a zone supervisor at US Naval Hospital. My community service is uh, I'm the state commissioner for Carl Ripken Bay Group for over 40 years. I'm also the commissioner of Guam Major League uh, for over 20 years. President of the Senior Baseball Association, US Air Force Reserve Retired Association, uh, Chief Master Sergeants, Guam Veteran Senior Softball Member, Guam Baseball Federation Board Member, and not but not uh, last but not least, a member of the Knights of Columbus. That's my... <laughs> And I'm glad you read out uh, each and every one of your credentials and your experience. It's um, actually a little hard to uh, conceive of squeezing all of that into one lifetime and you're still pretty young. So <laughs> um, yes, the qualifications that you listed work very much in the favor of the department, I feel. Um, each one that you mentioned, I think tackles another you know, one element of this very large mandate. And it is a large mandate. I mean, there's just no getting around that. So um, what I will do is go ahead and open this up to the others. And I see that uh, Senator Pito Trelahi has joined us. Uh, Senator, if you could turn your camera on and make yourself visible. Uh, we're very pleased to have you in attendance. So I'll go ahead and begin with Legislative Secretary, uh, Senator Shelton, if you'd like to ask a question. Thank you so much, um, Chairwoman. Uh, and Hafidi, Mr. Alcantara, it's very nice to see you. Uh, I wanna thank you for accepting uh, this position, this uh, nomination to this position or appointment to this position. Uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's not an easy job and um, the department has been very controversial over the last several years um, and has been faced with many, many challenges. DPR has many mandates and uh, limited resources as the chairwoman has mentioned. Uh, and she's been trying very hard to, to find a way to assist the department and uh, help its leadership. So uh, to see you stepping up to the role, I, I'm very happy uh, that you're here today. And I was very impressed by the resume that you shared with us. It's quite extensive and you obviously are a very educated man, well-rounded uh, with decades of service from the military uh, to facilities, procurement, compliance, federal grant writing. That's just a little of what I heard you say. The list is much, much longer. I was hoping that today you can share with us a little bit of what you've already been doing with the department and what is your vision and how do you plan to, uh, to carry that vision out? Uh, thank you for the question there, Senator. Uh, when I came into the department, there was some uh, issues there here about uh, the swimming pools, the, uh, all the other facilities, the uh, maintenance and all that. Uh, but uh, during my time here, I've taken care of getting uh, some projects that are done. Uh, and the, the last important one was the, the uh, Tiwak Cemetery, the PD uh, Cemetery that was uh, kind of like ignored uh, for so many, I don't know how long it was, but I had, it, uh, I had a contract to, contract to cut the grass. And so now you can, you can go up there and identify where the grave sites are. Uh, also the issue on the, uh, the swimming pools, which is the main, main issue that, uh, that is still under, under uh, the, the Parks and Recreation uh, purview. Uh, the Daddy Do swimming pool uh, is gonna be uh, out, the contract is out for repair and the bid opening will be on the 12th, which is Monday. So there'll be a, a contractor that will be uh, renovating and, and getting the pool at Daddy Do uh, 
you know, workable. Uh, the uh, the uh, Aganya pool, uh, the decision already was made that uh, the pool is not uh, uh, economically, uh, economically feasible. You know, we'll be spending money for maybe if we do repair it for a couple of years, that's it. Uh, so the decision was to uh, come up with uh, a, a new uh, a new pool, and so there is a there's a task force assigned by the governor to do a ta uh, you know uh, do a uh, with with the Gura uh, Gita and uh, uh, Parks and Rec that we do come up with a uh, with. Uh, uh, where we can, you know, come up with a new new swimming pool, and so we met yesterday with the the co committee. I mean, the task force, and the decision was that we're going to build the, the new Olympic size swimming pool at uh, Dedido, right next to the the uh, existing pool there, closest to the uh, soccer field. So that. Uh, that's what we decided yesterday, and we're going to present the uh, the final uh, the final decision to the governor next week. Uh, the Paseo Stadium is being renovated right now. Uh, right now, we uh, we just completed the, the lights. The lights are done. That's been been uh, an issue for maybe what four years now. So I had a contractor come in, and and the, the lights now are working. And then I uh, have a contractor doing um, the painting of the stadium right now. Uh, there are other other uh, contracts that uh, that were uh, completed. Uh, the restrooms at all the uh, the parks are done. There's about there's 16 restrooms that are renovated, and uh, nine of them are uh, actually 10 have already accepted, and there's six more that's left to be accepted. Um, so there are some uh, challenges out here and I uh, out over here at the parks because of the manpower that we have. I, I have uh, 10 uh, maintenance workers and uh, grass cutters together and two, of, two out of that 10, uh, there's uh, two trash collectors. They go around and, and, and collect the trash all over the, the island. You know, we're looking at 76 parks. And so I have two people that are doing that. And then I've got uh, two people that's assigned at PD Cemetery, cemetery to do uh, the, uh, the burial. And so I'm, I'm left with uh, four bush cutters uh, and one uh, riding more operator and uh, one edger. So that's, that's how we're, uh, we're maintaining, we're trying to maintain the parks by, by this limited uh, manpower that we have. And also, you know, I've gone out with uh, uh, adoptions of, of the parks, and that will alleviate some of our manpower. Uh, you know, the adoption of, of the parks will help us uh, because the adopters uh, will, you know, be the one responsible to maintain those uh, those those uh, parks. Wow, that's a that's a lot going on. You certainly hit the ground running and have accomplished a lot in just uh, the short time that you've been there. So uh, congratulations on all the work you've already done. Uh, just a follow up question about the, the swimming pool uh, and the task force's decision to build the Olympic sized swimming pool in the north. I, and I guess this is to replace the Haganya pool now. Um, yes. uh, can you share a little bit about how that decision uh, was made uh, and if there was any consideration uh, for another more central location for our southern and central residents to also uh, have a swimming pool? Well, there was a consideration as far as uh, building the pool in uh, Tizen, you know, but uh, the, the problem with Tizen is there's a lot of contaminants in the soil, uh, you know, that, that Tizen was left by the military. Uh, and so they had some uh, issues with the soil and also the aquifer. Uh, so, uh, you know, we decided that the, because of the, uh, the Deadly Duke pool being, uh, being uh, already surveyed and ready, you know, uh, ready to, to, to be utilized, uh, that was a decision uh, that we, we, we actually came up with, was to have it up in a, a, at the north. 
But then, you know, uh, we know that the, the, the southern area don't have, uh, you know, but uh, we're in the process uh, and the, the lieutenant governor is actually on top of this that we'll be doing a renovation at the uh, inner Rahan pool. So okay. that's, that's going to, you know, uh, be, be a plus for the, for the southern people. Okay, I'm glad to hear that that those uh, two things will happen concurrently. We'll be getting a new pool in the nor north and we'll fi be fixing the pool in the south. So thank you very much for that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it sounds like you've really had experience with the Department and Parks and Recreations facilities uh, being uh, active in the baseball community. It sounds like from the youngest league to the oldest league. And so, you know, the facilities um, inside and out. Uh, I know you you are a name that I've heard um, very often talking about the, the lights at the fields being down and um, you've taken a very active approach. And I've seen seen here today that that's one of the first things that you've taken care of. Uh, in these uh, days since you've been been in the job. So congratulations, uh, Mr. Alcantara. You definitely have my support and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Joe Smalasi, um, Legislative Secretary. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, move on to my uh, other committee members, if that's all right. And we'll go with um, a kind of by order of uh, who also tuned in. I think he even beat me to my own public hearing. So Who's the <laughs> so oldest, the oldest, start from the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a very appropriate consideration. Um, but uh, Senator Joe St. Augustine did beat me to my own public hearing. So uh, I will, I will give him that courtesy <laughs> of going next. Uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you, uh, Roki, uh, for accepting the nomination, you know, uh, for my colleagues, uh, um, when Roki was over at DOE, he was a go-getter. And, you know, uh, you we, we have to uh, give him credit for his, his service in the Air Force. You know, aim high. And that's all he's always been doing. He always focused on getting the job done, not make the excuse of why it can't get done, but finding ways to get it done. And that's and that's and that happens to be Roki's uh, motto, maybe. Uh, you know, it's like, give me a job, and I'll get it done. Just get out of my way so I can get it done. You know, don't don't be the reason why it can't get done. Uh, and 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 Roke is proving that he's proven it at DOE. He's proven it in his military service, and I look forward to supporting. And you know, I had a bunch of questions, but Esther Manaz and Esther, you answered all of it. That uh, Senator Shelton was asking. She asked one question. You gave her the whole the whole. You you so you served it uh, everything on a silver platter, and thank you, Roki. Uh, I look forward to uh, voting in favor of your appointment, your nominee, your appointment to uh, as director. And uh, I look forward to um, reaching out to you and seeing how you're doing and seeing how we can help you. And 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 when we help you, that means we're helping the people of Guam. And, and that's the key. Uh, you're out there. I, I'm just wondering if you're in the wrong position because the amount of expertise you have, uh, gosh, hey, uh, maybe parks and rec may be too small, but that's... But that's okay, you're Madam not Chair. I'm trying to discourage okay. him. I no, no, you're doing great. Him. But, <laughs> but, but you know, Ro Roki's got a lot of expertise. Procurement, we don't have to worry about procurement. Uh, construction, engineering, uh, he, he's, he's got it all. Um, and I give him credit. OSHA, gosh, uh, outstanding, Roke. Uh, thank you for joining you. The, uh, the group. And I look forward to... Uh, Voting yes on your on your uh, appointment. All right, and thank you, Madam thank Chair. You. Thank you. So, Joyce Massey, uh, Senator San Agustin, although uh, although you almost tried to uh, steal him away or something. So, uh, next I have uh, Senator Turlahi. If you have a question, uh, thank you very very much, Madam Chair. I just want to say that Rocky and I went way 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 back then, and uh, we used to. Uh, and yeah, Rook no. is very passionate in, in uh, supporting the sports. And I know that uh, I was telling my wife, and who is related to Rocky, that I will not miss uh, this hearing because, you know, in the beginning when I heard that Rocky is taking over the parks and recreation, he is the right person. He's a jack of all trade, I will say. And I know that he's going to do a good job. And let me just say to, uh, to my brother in law, Rocky, uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming forward and taking the challenge because, you know, you have a, a real hectic uh, job that you need to undertake uh, being the director of Parks and Rec. And I want to thank you. And uh, 
uh, even before then, when I first heard that I, I have to support this guy, not because he's my brother-in-law, but I know that he's a, he's a person with, with that passion to do whatever he can uh, to the best of his knowledge. And I want to thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to, uh, to uh, join the, uh, the conversation uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Just Masi, uh, Senator Terlahi, and next time I promise it won't be who comes here first. I'll go by age. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, Minority Leader, um, you were also in attendance last night, so I, I thank you for your diligence both last night and today. If you have a question, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I don't know if the girls would want you to do it by age because then you're revealing too much information for the women. So. <laughs> Rethink that, please. That's a good point. Love, That's a good point. Love, uh, hey guys. Yeah. First serve, first, first come, first serve. That should always be. Someone who wants to be here in time, like Senator St. Augustine, he was here before you, so he should go first. And that I, I, I like that. First serve, first, uh, first come, first serve. But Roki, again, oh my gosh, two nights in a row. This is great. Getting to really, really know you. And uh, though I've, I've seen you, you know, out in the community many times. Uh, and, you know, you had me at GW because, yes, he graduated from GW, GW rules. Sorry, Senator St. Augustine, but GW rules. <laughs> hey, I'm an Islander as well. <laughs> an Islander. Okay, I'll stick on Roki's side. And then, of course, that, that was the first plus. The second plus is, you know, Air Force. <laughs> I know he was Army too, but Air Force, my dad. You know my dad, Roki you know, yes. an avid Air Force person. So, but uh, gosh, uh, you know, all I can say is that thank you. Thank you so much for stepping up to the plate. It's not easy. I mean, even in your list of things that you do, you still have to like oversee SHPO. You still have to oversee other things like, you know, the, the grant writing scenario that uh, you were talking about parks and everything like that, that would help you. Um, so please take care of you as well, sir. We don't, like Senator Mar said, we don't wanna lose you to anything or, so please make sure you take some time for yourself. It's a lot of work to do. We know you're doing a great job already. You've done, you know, 10 times more than anyone who's been put in there. And you're like the third person, you know, combined together, you've still exceeded. Um, what has not been done at, at the parks and Re from other directors, so I, I you, you did such a great job. You're doing a great job. And I ask you, please, to take care of yourself as well. Um, but uh, Roki, you also um, answered to the board. Um, that was something a while ago for many years. Uh, Parks and Rec has never had a board. And um, then they just recently have one and, and stuff like this. So on the board's perspective, um, how are they doing uh, as far as you're you know, working with them? Like you mentioned the which by the way, I wish the pool was not in Derido. I'd like it in the South, <laughs> you know, or at least centralized, you know, having two pools at the same place. I'm hoping you reconsider. I'm gonna be making a phone call <laughs> to ask for reconsideration. I'm gonna ask him about saltwater pools because that's yeah. something we've talked about. Yeah, that's for a, the that's central and south area. area. Now I'm from Minorahan. You know, I appreciate all the work, you know, I, we've always wanted to keep Inarohan pool more of a natural pool than a man-made pool. Uh, making sure it's clean, the facilities, they've already added certain cement type of structure that took away from the naturalness of Inarohan pool, which I grew up swimming in before any steps or any cement was placed on the ground. So I hope, I'm curious to find out, well, I'll talk with you offline on that and see what you're exactly what you're gonna do. Um, but the board, talk to me a little bit about the board's responsibilities to you now that it's kind of new. Well, you know, the board, uh, the board uh, just met once and we, we looked at, uh, at I, I actually looked at the board as a, a very, very uh, well-versed uh, board, board uh, because uh, a lot of them are uh, affiliated with sports. You know, I've got uh, Mike Ravagu that's affiliated with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, Notre Dame High School. I guess that uh, that's where he was his coaching. And I've got uh, Darren uh, Stanett that's a, a coach for the uh, 
uh, bas women's basketball uh, federation. And also I've got uh, uh, Chris Duenas, which is uh, part of the swimming swimming federation. So there is a, a vast uh, knowledge of, uh, of uh, commission members uh, as far as sports oriented. And I'm still waiting for another commission member to be uh, to be confirmed, which is the, Mr. Bob Steffi. He's with the Baseball Federation and also with the National Olympic Committee. So yeah, with, with the, the board members, they're, they're, they're really, uh, you know, I'm just get, uh, kind of like, like waiting until we meet again so that, you know, there'd be some, a lot of discussion, uh, especially from, from the issues that was uh, brought up last night. So definitely I'm, I'm waiting for another meeting. And, and um, Roki, the, does the board have the final say whether the swimming pool be in Derido or whether certain projects are met or contracts that you issue out? Do the board make that decision or are they on a different uh, type of... Um... No, it's, it, it, I think the board's decision is what, uh, what we need to address as far as the, the parks issue, you know, the... the uh, Epal Beach, uh, Matapang, and uh, uh, all the other facilities around the island. Uh, this thing about the Dededu, uh, Dededu uh, Olympic uh, Park was uh, uh, it was initiated by the governor, and so the the four uh, I mean the three uh, uh, departments were tasked to to come up with a a, a basic. Uh, you know, uh, recommendation as to where we could probably uh, get a pool bill. Uh, we, we uh, in the beginning, it was uh, identified to be at uh, at uh, Tijan, but like I said, because of the condition there at Tijan, it, it was uh, it was so not recommended. Yeah, so I guess what I'm saying, Roki, is that will the board have, does it have to be approved by the board? Any of the decisions that you make? Well, that's not actually my decision. I mean, I can, I can uh, tell the board uh, exactly what we're, we're doing. And uh -huh. it's, it's up to the board to, you know, to, to recommend whatever. Um, okay, that's my question. Yeah, that's, that's my question, because I know you can... Because now you're under a board. I to the board is the board's decision to, you know, whether approve it or not. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. So it is, it, it is true for, to fruition. Okay, yes. uh, Roki, did you receive any CARES Act money? Any of? No, ma'am. No. Was there a, there was there a request from uh, Parks and Rec to receive any CARES Act money from the governor's not office? Know, not that I know of. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know if there was a request but uh we never got any any uh cares act uh money hey well i know your man that can find money make a phone call <laughs> you know <laughs> make a, a request you know uh to get some money for parks and rec i know that there's still money out there you know the 117 hasn't been spent yet i mean we actually don't know where it's being spent but uh we do know that not all of it's been spent so the opportunity for you uh for additional funding so please look into that. And you know, uh, thank you again so much, Roki. There's so much more you can do uh, and you decide to continue to serve the people of Guam and, and we really appreciate it. And my door is always open if you ever need any help for anything else. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Yes, and um, yeah, that was something that uh, we had been watching, the committee had been watching closely, especially at the beginning. Um, and there was that tie-in early on with uh, if they, when they were going to try to set up the homeless um, living quarters there. But even then, the 250000 was really uh, not going to DPR. So I agree with you, especially because DPR has been out there, PCOR 1, PCOR 2, PCOR 3. They've been mowing the grass and... and um, patrolling the parks and everything. And so they they have been essential frontliners in a lot of ways. And so their PPEs, even the lifeguards have been out there at different um, stages of the P course. So um, there's, there's certainly a lot of justification in them qualifying. And I, I definitely support efforts to, to continue seeking that. 
And also, I mean, uh, uh, in addition to the laundry list of accomplishments and tasks that he's already gotten squared away or on its way to being squared away, um, I believe you've written one or two grant applications. Is that the case? And if you could describe what those are for, uh, Director? Yes, I, 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 I wrote a grant and uh, I submitted it to uh, USDA. Uh, it's for equipment uh, for the, the park itself, uh, for maintenance uh, of the parks, uh, bush cutters, uh, uh, blowers, riding more, uh, PPEs for, for my guys, and uh, uh, a van, uh, a van that would uh, transport the, uh, the inmates once we, once we uh, get the, the COVID out of the way, you know, the support will be from the inmates and that's what uh, was uh, helping us out uh, maintain the park. So uh, there is also a van that, uh, that is gonna be provided on that grant. And uh, uh, so it, it, it's just uh, uh, issues that, uh, that is continuing here at the park because of limited uh, resources. Uh, we we have uh, two riding more. Actually, one of them was donated by the uh, baseball federation, and we have at least three bush cutters. And so, and that's the reason why I decided to sit down and 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 get this grant going. Hopefully, uh, it's approved, and then we'll get all those equipment in. Excellent. So yes, somehow you managed to squeeze in uh, writing a, a grant as well. And you did mention the uh, the restrooms that 10 have been cleared. Does that mean that they're open or is there still another step before they're open to the public? Like, again, we're in PCOR 1. I know that uh, certain restrictions have been lifted, that there is some access to the parks and beaches now. Uh, does that include having those restrooms open or does that need another layer of opening up first? I, I think it needs another layer of opening. Uh, we haven't opened up the, uh, the restrooms uh, yet because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still waiting for direction whether to open it up or not. Uh, we've accepted, like I said, I, I actually accepted 10 of the restrooms. Uh, and there's six pending uh, acceptance, which is you know some uh, minor if issues that the contractor has to address before we accept it. And um, you know, renovating those restrooms, we already have two restrooms that are vandalized. Ugh. And so, um, you know, it's just uh, I mean, fixing it. Uh, it it's just uh, something that we need to really uh, get our park rangers out there to, to enforce it. But, you know, uh, it, it, it's just that, you know, if, if we renovate restrooms, they should, you know, appreciate that we're doing that for them. But uh, an incident down at, uh, at EPEN, they just uh, took all the dispensers out of the wall and ramp and uh, threw it down on the floor, damaged all the dispensers. Uh, the problem is because we did not open that uh, restroom so they had to cut the lock themselves. But when they found out that there was no uh, toiletries inside, they just ransacked the place. And then they thought that maybe because uh, the, men re the men's restroom was not uh, accommodated with uh, you know, uh, toiletries, they went to the women's restroom and they did the same thing because they couldn't find any, any uh, toiletries. The same happened down at uh, at uh, Nimitz Beach uh, uh, restaurants. There, you know, it's just uh, vandalized. But uh, you know, I, I had the contract to go out out there and and repair all of those already. So hopefully that uh, you know it it uh, continues that way, where you know we we can uh, or the people can appreciate that we're doing this for them. But I, I do have a, a, a contractor that's going to do the janitor, janitorial. We're just waiting for the to to get direction if we're going to open up uh, all those restrooms. Yeah, and you know that's just such a real shame um, that 
a small percentage, and it, and it does seem like it's a small percentage, but a small percentage can ruin so much for everybody else who wants to appreciate that and wants to, to use that. And uh, so we have to continue to find ways to tackle that behavior. And, um, and you know, as you mentioned, um, beef up the park patrol. And I know the minority leader has been a real advocate for security cameras. And so we have to keep on chipping away at this because it's not acceptable that uh, whoever it is out there is ruining that for everybody else and, and putting all the, what adds up to actually as millions of dollars trying to make these facilities serviceable to everybody. And then they're actively ruining that for everybody and costing everybody more. So we will continue to, to be working at all of those elements to, to chip away at that. And we, we did have um, some discussion about the tennis courts. I believe they're being resurfaced right now. What is the timeline on that to resurfacing? Well, the, the tennis court, that's the Nanette, uh, uh, Rick Nanette's tennis court here in Agania. Uh, they, we had two contracts there. One was to repair all the fence and everything. Uh, the <laughs> fence was completed. So now we're just waiting for the uh, the other contractor to uh, get their material in to do the resurfacing of the of the court. But in the meantime, uh, the tennis court is still open until we get a, a set date on when the, the uh, material will be in, then we'll have to uh, actually uh, stop the usage of that until, you know, until we're, we're done. So hopefully in the, in, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be starting to start working on the resurfacing. Okay, and you know, I, I read that article about the uh, resurfacing, it, and we had the engineer who was in, and, and I'm not sure if this is beyond uh, what he does exactly. Is there any way that he can look before the resurfacing starts to um, understand what was being said about uh, that the resurfacing? will only mean that there will be cracks again in uh, maybe a couple of years. Um, is, there, is there any way to have somebody check out that soil or see if there needs to be anything more intensive than that? Since if we're gonna repair it, you know, to try to, to try to do it at a deeper level, either this time or the next time around? Yeah, well, the, the contract goes for the uh, the repair of all those cracks, which is to, to cut into those cracks and uh, like a, a V shape, and then put uh, like an epoxy uh, uh, compound in there to to eliminate the the the, the, uh, the crack. So that's uh, that's one of the the main uh, concern that I have because the uh, the uh, tennis court had a lot of you know has a lot of cracks, but. Uh, the, if there is a, a, the company that was going to do that's going to do that contract has already indicated that they do have an expert uh, com, uh, engineer that's uh, recommending uh, uh, a material that will you know uh, eliminate those 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 cracks. So uh, okay, uh, well, and and I hope that it helps with the, the reoccurrence of those cracks and. Um, you know, if they do show with the Haganya pool, since we're in that uh, neighborhood virtually in our minds, um, I know that you've looked at several possibilities. I've heard um, all kinds of possibilities myself. Maybe you've heard the same ones. Uh, make it a skating park, uh, make it a beach volleyball play, um, have aquaculture and tilapia or something in there. Um, do, has, a, has a decision been made or is that something you're continuing to look at? For the, no, the yeah, we, yeah, the the task force met yesterday, and uh, that's still uh, being looked at because the suggestion was to uh, uh, make it into a skate park, and the other one is to make it into a beach volleyball, uh, which uh, the, it is probably the best thing that I can uh, think about the the pool because there is a, a volleyball, the volleyball federation that wants to adopt uh, the, you know, the, uh, the court, the volleyball court, once it's done. 
And so that would, you know, they, they're, they're there to maintain the facility and that will help us out as far as the, uh, you know, the uh, maintenance and, and, and whatever for, for that, uh, you know, where the pool is. So that's still in the works. I mean, you know, there's two ideas, one beach volleyball and the other one is a skate park. Okay, so it, it sounds like the tilapia farm is, uh, is way out. <laughs> the tilapia farm is gonna, yeah. In fact, we, uh, we're gonna pump the water out uh, as soon as we get the, uh, the pump uh, ready, we're gonna pump the water out of that uh, pool. Hmm. And also uh, the daddy do pool, we're gonna you know, start pumping those water out of the pool. Uh, I have my maintenance oh. guy up at the Daddy Do doing uh, maintenance work up there now. Yeah, and so it's good to hear that that has started. Um, and is there a timeline? Does that contractor have a t timeline as to how long it will take? I know earlier you had estimated maybe three to six months. Is that where we're still at? Yes, uh, it's supposed to be for 90 days, three months. Um, so it, it, it all depends on, you know, like the, the bid opening is going to be on Monday, the 12th. And then if there's no problem with the, the bid and all that, then, you know, it's, it's uh, GSA's uh, uh, will have to start, you know, uh, I mean, award the contract. So that, that would take, you know, around three months and hopefully we can get the pool running at the early part of next year. Okay, uh, yes, and, and I do appreciate your diligence on this. Um, oh, and that reminds me, and then I'll see if, if anybody else has a question. Um, we, since the task force met yesterday, have they been able to make any progress on finding alternate sites for um, Manumco to exercise or for the Swim Federation to maybe have uh, some practice? Yes. Uh... <laughs> We asked uh, the Lieutenant Governor and uh, the uh, GITA Director, Joan, Joanne Komatsu, they, uh, they're working on trying to get uh, to negotiate the, uh, the Leo Palace for, you know, for, for uh, usage of the Manamku and the KIT and the, and the uh, Swimming Federation. Uh, right now, we're just waiting for uh, the Swimming Federation at chain to give us the total number of mm -hmm. Uh, individuals that are going to be utilizing uh, the uh, Leo Palace or other uh, other uh, other pools that uh, that you know that are willing to to uh, negotiate with the uh, lieutenant governor and you know as far as usage of their facility. Yeah, and and number is important because Leo Palace um, when there had been some negotiation prior. Um, it is per head per hour, or at least uh, that's how they start. And then I'm not sure where the negotiation goes from there. And I don't know if there's possibility. Um, of course, we want it to be all uh, uh, appropriate, uh, appropriately done. But um, I was saying that if we have a quarantine facility and we're renting out certain rooms, there might be some accommodation um, to, to negotiate you know, usage of the pools there, but that's uh, that's beyond me. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Well, um, for uh, Senator Joe or Senator Terlahi, um, did you have a question? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, and I just want uh, to just uh, ask Roque, uh, Roque uh, just at least one question. And that is, uh, Roque, you know that I share the, uh, the Committee of Public Safety so I was kind of just thinking about uh, your park rangers. Are they are they supposed to be uh, post certified before they they start working for Park and Rec? Yeah, actually, uh, Senator, they're uh, just like police officers. Okay, because they, they you know, all went, uh, they went to all the uh, the uh, uh, training and requirement to to be a police officer. So. For now, right now, they, they're uh, attached to the police department uh, on this, the P-Core 1. So that, that's, uh, they're being utilized over there so that they can be responsible for any problems at the park. You know, because okay. they, yeah, they're, they're, they're responsible, yes. 
Uh, Rock, do you anticipate of uh, recruiting more park rangers and how many do you need? With the, we actually had the budget in for four park rangers, but uh, the budget was cut. So uh, we, uh, the Senator Kelly Mars and I actually talked about getting, uh, you know, uh, park ranger uh, reserves. Uh, reserves, yes. So I've already drafted up the, uh, the, uh, the documents on that one. Uh, I, I got the documents from the uh, probation office. And so that's going to be introduced pretty soon. And the only reason why I ask you this, uh, uh, Rogue, is because, you know, uh, we, I've introduced Bill uh, 380, and that's the early retirement for law enforcement. And, uh, you know, I want to get everything ready and include your parks officer to be part of that, uh, you know, early retirement. So, Rogue, I, I, I just want to commend you for a, a job well done. And... Please continue. I know you're going to do the work. I know you're a hardworking guy. You're passionate to the things that you need to do. And I want to thank you for taking the challenge again and coming forward. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you, Senator. Wow. And um, so I believe, uh, Senator Joe, you're good. And uh, I'm pretty sure the minority leader has a question. So, uh, oh, OK, well, I was surprised. Um, you're I, very I, I want to uh, be in between dinner. <laughs> Everybody's probably yes. hungry. I don't want to be in. No, thank you. Thank you, man. So, and, and we've covered things uh, between last night and tonight. Um, so the last thing I'll go over is, um, and we've only talked about it lightly, but I do think it has potential, is um, the possibility of some saltwater pools. They can be Olympic sized if we wanted to go in that direction. Palau has done this. And one of the areas that was looked at, um, I'm in my office, so I'm, I'm looking at Paseo, here, but because Paseo is disturbed already, and I agree with the minority leader, like we wanna disturb as little as possible. We wanna keep uh, nature in place as much as possible. It's, uh, it's such an important research resource for our people, but there is disturbed area over there at Paseo. And so uh, one site that had been looked at previously, and it's very central location, I mean, just down the road from Hagatnya Pool, is to potentially put one there and then maybe in a, uh, a disturbed area or an area where it made sense down south like Maleso or something like that. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you have any thoughts. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, maybe no movement going in any of those directions yet, just a, a little bit of discussion floating around. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to say, Director? No, ma'am. Just, uh, just like what you said, there's just discussion uh, as far as yes, the uh, saltwater pool. I know there was some uh, uh, documents and uh, and some drawings that were 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 made uh, from uh, from uh, previous uh, park uh, administrators here. So uh, I I do have the the documentation on that, and so you know that's. Uh, one of the things that we can look for in the future. Yeah, and I mean, uh, certainly I don't know much about them, but they're supposed to be very economical, uh, self-cleaning. Um, and, and it's maintenance-free. Yeah, maintenance-free and the salt water is supposed to be um, healthier and, and even especially so for the Manumco, um, it's more buoyant and, um, you know, the healing qualities of, of salt water are uh, pretty well known. So um, I think that's all our questions. I again, thank everybody for their attendance. I, I know that it was staying a, a little bit late on a Friday night. And so um, I really appreciate that. And it shows your commitment to DPR and to supporting uh, Director Alcantara. So with that, um, Let's see, I'll get to the closing. The committee will continue to receive written testimony for the next few days. Please address your written testimony, should you have any, to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. Written testimony may be submitted by email to office.senatorkelly.com at guamlegislature.org or 
physically dropped off at the protocol office at the Guam Congress building on the first floor, the first floor of the Guam Congress building. So, Sadhuas Maasi, for your attendance and participation in today's virtual confirmation public hearing. Today's hearing is now adjourned. Sadhuas Maasi, and the time is now uh, 6.28 to have a good evening. Take care, Roki. Thank you, Kunal. Get some rest, Roki. Get some rest. Okay.